Hi, I'm Raul. Welcome to my YouTube channel, My Solution. In this video, you will learn about cash and cash equivalents. In most people, if you ask what is cash, they will simply say money. The bills and coins used to buy or pay bills, or you can say used in business transaction. The bills and coins in circulation must be legal tender to be acceptable for exchange. However, in accounting, the term cash has a broader meaning. It does not only include money, but also includes negotiable instrument that is payable in money and acceptable by bank for deposit and immediate credit. Accordingly, cash includes checks, bank draft, and money orders because these are acceptable by bank for deposit and immediate credit. Post-dated check or PDC cannot be considered as cash yet because these are not acceptable by bank for deposit or outright encashment. The following cash items are included in cash. Cash on hand. This includes undeposited collection and other cash items awaiting for deposit such as customer check, cashier or manager's check, traveler's check, bank draft, and money orders. Cash in bank. This includes a checking account or others called it demand deposit and savings deposit which are unrestricted for withdrawal. In some cases where minimum balance is required to be maintained, usually this is in connection with the borrowing arrangement with the bank, the first question to be asked is, is it legally restricted as to withdrawal? If the answer is in affirmative, the next question is, is the restriction is less than a year? If yes, it will be presented as restricted cash under current asset, otherwise reported as non-current asset. If no restriction, then it will be included in the cash as current asset. Last but not the least is cash in fund. There are two uses of cash in fund. The first is used for current operation. These are funds set aside for current purposes. Example, petty cash fund, payroll fund, dividend fund, and others. And the second is used for non-current purposes or payment of non-current obligation. This type of fund are presented as non-current asset or long-term investment. Example of these funds are sinking fund, preference share redemption fund, contingent fund, insurance fund, and fund for the acquisition of property, plant, and equipment. The classification of fund should be parallel to related liability. Example, sinking fund set aside to pay a bond payable shall be classified as current asset when the bonds payable is already due within one year after the end of reporting period. Cash equivalents. These are short-term and highly liquid investments that are readily convertible into cash. These are investments purchased three months or less before the maturity. Example, three months treasury bill. Three year treasury bill purchased three months before the maturity. Three months time deposit. Three months money market instrument. Now, let me ask you, is equity securities qualify as cash equivalents? The answer is no for the very reason that shares do not have a maturity date. However, preference shares with specified redemption date and acquired three months or less before the redemption date can qualify as cash equivalents. What is important to be considered cash equivalent is the date of purchase, which should be three months or less before the maturity. Measurement of cash. Cash is measured at face value. Cash in foreign currency is measured at the current exchange rate. 
if a bank or financial institution holding the fund in bankruptcy or financial difficulty, cash should be measured at estimated realizable value if this is lower than the face value. Financial statement presentation. Cash and cash equivalents are presented as one line item in the balance sheet. This includes all cash items like cash on hand, cash in bank, cash fund, and cash equivalents, which don't have restriction in use for current operation. However, details should be disclosed in the notes to financial statement. Okay, let's try to solve one problem and apply what we just learned. Jude Corporation's cash ledger balance on December 31, 2019 was $160,000. On the same date, Jude held the following items in its safe. A $5,000 check payable to Jude dated January 1, 2020 that was not included in the December 31, 2019 checkbook balance. If we are going to analyze the first bullet, Jude Corporation received a check amounting to $5,000 dated January 1, 2020. By looking on Jude's balance sheet date, which is December 31, 2019, we can conclude that the check received was a post-dated check. As what we just learned, post-dated check is not considered cash and cash equivalents. Therefore, Jude is correct not to record this in its book on December 31, 2019. Next, a $3,500 check payable to Jude deposited on December 20 and included in the December 31 checkbook balance that was returned NSF. The check was redeposited on January 2, 2020 and cleared January 5, 2020. In this transaction, the amount of $3,500 was recorded in Jude Corporation's book. However, there was no su sufficient fund when the check was deposited. As a result, Jude Corporation cash balance per book was overstated. So you'd have to reverse the entry made previously to correct the cash balance per book. But if the check was redeposited on or before December 31, 2019 and cleared, then no adjustment is necessary. Next, a 25,000 check payable to a supplier and drawn on Jude's account that was dated and recorded on December 31, 2019, but was not mailed until January 10, 2020. In the third bullet, since the check drawn against Jude's account still in their possession until December 31, 2019, and delivered only on January 10, 2020, there should be no entry made until the check was mailed or delivered. Therefore, reversal entry should be made to correct the understatement of Jude's cash balance per book. After analyzing the transaction in Jude's safe, we can calculate the cash balance as follows. An adjusted balance of Jude cash ledger account December 31, 2019, 160000 we have to add the check payable to supplier dated and recorded on December 31, 2019 but not mailed until January 10, 2020, amounting to 25000 We have to deduct the NSF check returned by the bank on December 30, 2019, amounting to 3500 So we can arrive at the adjusted balance December 31, 2019, amounting to 181500 Okay, that's all for cash and cash equivalents. If you like our video, please give us your comment and please don't forget to subscribe for more videos. In our next video, we will show you the bank reconciliation. What is bank reconciliation? What is deposit in transit? What is outstanding checks? What is bank debit or credit memo? What is bank balance? What is book balance? So make sure to subscribe for our next video.